Hello, good evening and welcome. My name is Mark Devlin and this is the Majority Podcast, Scotland's number one anti-nationalist show. Uh, we're going out live on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. And uh, here tonight with the co-hosts, uh, Niall Fraser and David Griffiths. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hope you're having a great Thursday evening. So tonight, what are we going to be talking about tonight, uh, David? Tonight, I will be asking... Is Sturgeon looking to start World War Three? Okay, and I will be revealing, exposing the SNP's shocking plan to force a unilateral declaration of independence. And tonight, I'm asking uh, if Sturgeon would sink or float. If she floats, she's a witch. If she sinks, well, she's a witch as well. And, of course, we have Zoomer of the Week. So uh, Doyle, I can't even say that, double, <laughs> double toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. We will be back in just a moment. Uh, well, hello again. And um, first, we all start the podcast with a big thank you to our donors, uh, people just like you who put together their cash um, and good wishes for us to start uh, the podcast. If you would like to support the podcast, you can do so on our webpage. Just go to the majority uh, dot scot slash donate. And um, we, if you anything you give us uh, will be used to fight nationalism in Scotland. So um, I also would like to big, big thank you to our uh, distribution partners, UK Union Voice and United Against Separation. Um, you can also watch this on Facebook and YouTube and please do subscribe if you can. Yes, and uh, if you can't give monetarily, uh, the very least you can do is a like, a share, and the comments are already filtering in. Some somebody saying Sturgeon will sink. Uh, like, comment, share. It's imperative uh, to activate more anti-nationalist voices. You're here. Yes, it is. So um, uh, coming up, now I was going to be talking about the witches as we talk. Which witches mm -hmm. are you going to be talking about? <laughs> and um, David's going to be talking about uh, Nicola Sturgeon's grandstanding, which seems to be her biggest uh, skill. And um, I'll be talking about something just in a second. Um, so this week I wrote an article about uh, SNP's fantasy referendum plans. Um, I think, as as most of us know, that there is the Scot the, to get a referendum, Scot Scottish nationals, so the SNP, Scottish government, I should even say, have to get what's known as a Section Thirty order from the UK government. And the reason for that is that. Um, the Scottish government isn't actually allowed to run a referendum on uh, constitutional issues. So they need a special dispensation from the UK government. In fact, such a dispensation was given during the 2014 referendum by David Cameron. But they haven't been able to get one um, since then. And Theresa May and Boris Johnson have both denied Nicola Sturgeon her S30. So, um, yeah, we, we talked about this a bit before, and what kind of excuses have they used for that? Um, well, in the past, of course, we've had um, the uh, f had the Edinburgh Agreement. We know that it was signed to say that uh, there will be a, a fair test and a decisive expression of the views of the people of Scotland, and almost immediately that was jumped because from the next day they started to say and the day after the referendum oh no no we've got to have another crack at this pretty much despite the fact that it showed a clear majority of scots wanting to remain in the uk mm -hmm. um and in addition i mean it's it's clearly not a high priority for people now but yet the clamor goes on it's just quite bizarre i don't think it even registers a priority david no it indeed. doesn't even register 
uh, it's consistent, uh, consistent threshold is 60%. Yep. It's just farcical, uh, never going to happen. Uh, and besides the point, now's not the time. New is definitely not the time. Well, 100%. one, we had the vote. It was decisive. Done. Let's move on. But we're in amongst a COVID pandemic and the Ukraine crisis yeah. at this point. Yeah. Uh, and the cost of living crisis as well, which is just impending. So it's definitely not the time. Uh, I, I think it's insanity to, to, to force this through. I really do. It's insanity. I, absolutely. Some, somebody made the point to me yesterday that every time you see oil prices spiking, every time a recession follows. So can you imagine trying to set up a new nation state with a new completely untested currency having come out of a massive, uh, very, very well-established um, union, so social, political and economic union at time of recession, at the time, just after an unprecedented global pandemic where uh, the world economy has shrunk as never before. The timing could not possibly be worse. We've got military conflict over in East Europe, Asia, I mean, really, how many, how many other uh, bad examples do you have to give or how many other reasons do you have to give not to do it? But yet they're still pushing ahead and they're still saying, oh, no, it's going to be next year, you know. The referendum is going to be next year. Oh, no, Yeah, it's not. so, I mean, the, the our position, of course, is that why are we even talking about this? Quite. This, is, this is a settled issue. Uh, it was the Edinburgh Agreement said to deliver a divide, not a divisive, but a decisive, decisive. Uh, decision of the Scottish people. A Absolutely. decisive, not multiple chances right. at a, a referendum. So our position as the majority is we had a vote. The majority of Scots voted to remain in the UK. Therefore, from now, UK rules apply. Mm -hmm. But um, the other day, what prompted this article was that I saw uh, a post, uh, a video actually by this guy here, um, he's called, uh, I think his name is Gordon Ross, and he does these videos from his car. He calls himself the Indie Car Videos. And um, <laughs> this guy, uh. this guy claims that he has the inside track to um, to Mike Russell, uh, who is the uh, party the, chairman. Is, that's right. He's oh yeah, that's right. He's the president actually. Yeah, so he used to be the Constitution um, spokesperson. That's uh, right, spokesperson, and so. You know, it's worth a listen. This guy basically said, you know, as a as a, 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 a supporter, as, as someone who wants a, a referendum, how are we going to do this? Right when we need an S thirty and we need this order, and this and so what happened was that uh, this guy makes this video and he basically says that um, we don't actually. Mike Russell says that we don't actually need an S thirty. That an S thirty is just actually a kind of gentleman's agreement. That the UK would just that the UK has to kind of abide by or to participate so that the UK can participate in the process. And of course, it's nothing of the sort. Right. Um, and it's quite something to uh, to watch how this actually is. Uh, uh, maybe you don't want to actually um, watch the the guy's video, but you can you certainly you can read the, read my article, which outlines the the main parts of it. But what happens in this, it becomes, it starts off with like, okay, so you think at first, this is a bunch of nutters who are going to try and do an advisory referendum. An advisory referendum doesn't actually have any force. Mm -hmm. But as it unfolds, we begin to see that what they're trying to do is to have this advisory referendum and then to use that positive result as a way of forcing a unilateral declaration of independence. And I think that this is quite a dangerous strategy. Um, what do you think about that, David? Well, I mean, I think it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a, an almost farcical set of circumstances. If they really are thinking about UDI here, how is it going to work exactly? This was tried in, in Rhodesia, if you remember, back in the 60s. <laughs> That's the last time I can remember any country uh, issuing a unilateral declaration of independence. And we know what followed there. Absolutely dreadful. So the, the idea of doing this, really... Yeah, I can, it, 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 it strikes me as a last throw of the dice. It just They know that they can't do it. They know that they don't have the legal uh, stand, standing to do this. So it would be almost an admission of failure. And I think it would be highly, highly toxic. I, I, I can't believe they would do it. I think it would be very dangerous. I think it would, it would really uh, emphasize the fact that we are becoming almost like 
a more uh, a more unstable Northern Ireland, and I just cannot right. believe they would ever want to do this. It would be like Ca the Catalonian example is another. I just think there is no uh, no precedent for anybody committing an act like this in the hope of breaking away from the the, the country and it being successful. I think it's just ludicrous. We have to remember, of course, that we're talk what we would be talking about is a minority. Sure. of separatists who would be using this advisory referendum that would say, let's just say it, what it was it was boycotted, and we'll yeah. talk about that in a second, yeah. that, that there was a boycott, and they got a result, the result they wanted. Let's just say it went 60% for them. Okay. The, the danger, I think, is that they can use that as P PR. They can wander yeah. around saying the Scottish people this, the Scottish sure. people that, and so on, yes. when in fact, even the official referenda and the, the, this last one, I don't think, had that uh, official turnout numbers. But the ones before, uh, I remember in 1979, perhaps, the, that one was, the result was disallowed because there weren't enough people uh, overall. That's right. Not, not enough of the electorate voted uh, for it. So in this case, what they're basically saying is this minority of people are going to say, we declare yep, independence. They decide. And, and, and their plan is to go out to international agencies and try and cause as much trouble as possible. Yes, indeed. it's unbelievable. Uh, it's just it's uh, highly irresponsible, and it, I, I really, I think it would mean that they, they wouldn't be taken seriously as a, as a government again. I think it would just, it, I think it would actually be the death knell for the independence movement in Scotland from yeah. possibly a century because it's just you cannot act like this if you're a, a serious participant in a, a, a political and economic debate. You can't just say, "No, that's it. We're leaving." You can't yeah. do that. It's not in their well, I mean, What are they going that. to do? Are they going to put tanks in the border? I mean, this is Absolutely. what. I, how can it be enforced? That's that's a pretty strange thing. But yeah. let's go back go back to our side a little bit, um, yep. Niall. What do you think of uh, the actual idea of a boycott? I mean, a, a, I, I, I think a boycott would be initiated almost immediately if if they were to say to me, uh, "We're going to put an advisory referendum," I just wouldn't participate. Quite just right. wouldn't participate. But then there'll be a lot of people like me in my position. That will only participate, and like you said, Mark, they'll use that ammunition because it'll be skewed. It will be nationalists that's voting on this um, to make well, it I believe seem that like in, in, in eighty-nine percent want independence. Most, uh, yeah, yeah, I believe uh, that happened in Catalonia. It was, they had a ninety-nine percent or something like that because only yeah. um, the separatists, separatists wanted, only voted. That's right, they yeah. only voted. But I, I do worry about it a little bit because with, we do have some weak opposition and. Um, you, you might see a situation where Labour or the Scots Tories go, "Oh yeah, we should. We, you know, we have to. We have to do everything the nationalists want to do because they're always fighting on the nationalist ground." Yes. Um, yeah. And this is the thing that I'm concerned about uh, is is that with such a weak opposition and in Scotland that they do this this they always they're never ahead. Mm. of the uh, nationalists and strategy they're always dealing with Reacting. you know in, in, in the defense that's so right. uh, that's actually the main thrust of the article which is basically to say then um okay well what do we have what can we do to get ahead of this and i i put up some some recommendations as a bigger list in the article itself of course but basic ones i think that have to be done are that this uk government should make clear that independence reference so-called independence referendums are actually about breaking up the uk right. and they affect all uk citizens and that's a particularly important t point at this time uh, i think the David mentioned that earlier. We've got a Ukraine crisis, international crisis. We need to present a united front to potential enemies. We talked about this as well last week about Chinese influence uh, coming through into, uh, you know, Mark Bly, the Scottish economist, saying that he would sell ports for strategic use to China as a way That's to right. threaten the UK. It's unbelievable. It is shocking. Uh, I mean, see what an advisory poll would do. It's just it's it's just a colossal waste of money. Absolutely right. A colossal waste of money. Uh, as if the S and P have wasted enough of your money, but they <laughs> want to waste some there. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of great comments coming in. Keep them coming in, guys. Uh, uh, Scotland could not survive on its own. Avril Crookshanks. If we were independent at the beginning of the pandemic, we would have been broke. There would have been no furlough money. That's that would have been <laughs> definitely no. Certainly. Um, yeah. What other great comments coming is. in? Yeah, I think we've got. I've got a couple other recommendations. Uh, amend, which, amend the Scotland Act, 
to explicitly disallow, disallow any further referendums on the constitution by the devolved assemblies, because this, I think, is the point. The devolved assemblies weren't set up to mm. be places to foment grievance against the UK and to be talking shops or, or activist, home, activist hotbeds uh, for independence. That's not what they were set up for. They were set up to improve the lives of Scots. And every time the SNP and the Greens and other nationalist parties talk about uh, independence, it's time that they're not spending talking about uh, helping ordinary Scottish people Quite and right. uh, while our services decline. Absolutely right. A couple of questions here. You know, can we uh, break down the reasons why or dismantle their, uh, what was it exactly the, uh, the question was, can we have a conversation about why it's a bad idea in principle? It's a bad idea in principle, uh, independence that is, because it would make the lives of every everyday lives of Scots immeasurably poorer, without question. Well, it's not just Scots. It's it's the entire UK. This is the thing. Absolutely, this is the yeah. thing that, that struck me most when we came back. I came back to the UK after many years overseas. The idea that Scottish independence was uh, was something for the Scots alone to decide, Quite when right. it would diminish the entire UK. It's diminish the entire UK's territory. It would diminish its social uh, social integrity, its economic integrity, and now we can see it would diminish its military integrity. Indeed. So I don't understand why the UK government would have any point saying, "Okay, we'll give you know this small amount of separatists in one part of our country that the will gamble the future of the whole country on this small amount of separatists." Absolutely. And that's the idea I think that we really need to get into people's minds now. This mm -hmm. isn't actually a decision decision for the Scots. And well, let's put it another way: the Scots already decided. Mm -hmm. They decided to be part of the UK. Now it's UK rules. The UK now has to decide that that there should be no more referendums. That was it. You had your chance. You did your best. Sorry, but it's over. And the longer this goes on, this never end goes on. And these ideas of fake, uh, uh, fake polls, advisory polls, just continue trouble that's not necessary when we need to be getting on with real, real life. I think that's hundred percent. Hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. Indeed. And this is the point. You, you touched okay. on the point. I'll just very quickly. You touched on the point. Okay. Earlier, that Scots voted. It wasn't really Scots who voted because a lot of Scots didn't vote. People who happened to be registered to vote in Scotland voted, and that meant a lot of people who weren't Scots. Whereas a lot of Scots, like me, I didn't get the vote. I'm, I'm not sure if you did, Mark, but I didn't. So, no, I was yeah, away for too long. Indeed. So yeah, this it's 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 not it's far more nuanced than just oh Scotland wants to be free, let's have a vote. No, sorry guys, that's not going to happen. Well, it's actually a little bit worse than that. But I was, I was telling you about this Indy Car guy, and they basically I didn't actually put this in the article, but he basically said that they should give all the votes the votes to EU national any EU national that's in Scotland at the time of the vote. You know, like <laughs> wait a minute, uh -huh. you know, how okay. you just this is the thing. It's like we need to stop this. It just, yeah. It's it's been going on too long. People like Sturgeon and her pals have been making money, getting money and power out of yeah. Uh, delusion yes really every day we see people on uh twitter and social media and out, out in the streets and stuff and they think there's going to be a second referendum there isn't going to be one it needs to be the uk government boris has said there's not going to be one mm -hmm. but the uk government needs to make laws that mean that it, it's not yes. going to happen that's the I thing think that's, that's the key. once that's done there's a, a hard stop and we this can is, move on. Exactly. This is what we've talked about for, for about 18 months, a clarity act to enshrine it in law that you cannot yes. just have a small part of the north of the United Kingdom saying, I'd, I'd quite like us to break away, please. I, 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 would, I would even accept uh, a time limit on that. Yeah. You know, I, I would accept maybe in 15 years' time you can have another one. Well, why would you do that though? Why would you want to break up the UK? This is the this is the question. Why? Which country wants itself to, would, would give itself a vote to be broken up by a minority of separatists? No, it's it's it's, it's, it's insane actually, and that's what I think. We've always been working on the idea that that it's this is a decision for the Scots. Well, it's okay. Scots decided. Now it's a decision for the UK. It's mm -hmm. UK rules. Now I said this to a guy today on Twitter. I said you lost. Now. We, we remain part of the UK, it's UK rules. You can whine about democracy all you like, but the mm. UK democracy means this, there can be no other no other referendum, and it's UK rules. So we need to, UK needs to assert its primacy yes. in this. 
we have a, a national government and then we have devolved administrations. And I think also one of the things that should be done is that the UK government should, should strip the uh, devolved administrations of the title of government. I think they're not competing governments. That's a key point. They mm -hmm. are, um, they are a, assemblies that look after regions of the UK. Yes, quite. And so, so that's I think that. So let's move, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. And coming up, Nile, our Witchfinder General, will be finding <laughs> witches all across this land. And David is going to be talking about sturgeon blowing up our dear green planet. <laughs> and of and course, it's been similar the week later on. Can't yeah, stay tuned. Right. Stay tuned. Okay, just, just Don't go anywhere. Hey David, it's up to you, over to you. Here we go. Okay, okay. So this week we've seen Ms Sturgeon try a new tactic in her increasingly desperate struggle to distance Scotland from the UK government. Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine a couple of weeks ago, Sturgeon has been fighting to have her thoughts on the conflict broadcast to a waiting world. So yesterday she came up with a brilliant suggestion that NATO should not rule out a no-fly zone over Ukraine, and I think we have a video showing this. Yeah, here, here it comes. death toll make the case for the West to impose a no-fly zone, as President Tillerson was asking for yesterday again. I think the West has to keep its mind open to every way in which Ukraine can be helped. Uh, so I think getting uh, whatever military support and uh, military equipment Sorry. that Ukraine needs it has to be a priority and I would hope that we will see uh, a solution found. We've got Poland wanting to provide fighter jets. Uh, the US obviously sceptical about the plan they've put forward. Um, I hope we will see a resolution to that so that that kind of assistance can be provided. Uh, I understand and you know, I, I share the, the concerns about a direct military confrontation mm. between Russia and NATO that a no-fly zone oh. may uh, lead to. Uh, so I understand that. Nobody wants to see an escalation of that nature. But on the other hand, Putin is not acting <laughs> in any way rationally or, or defensively. And, uh, you know, we have a situation right now where perhaps the only thing nuclear weapons are deterring is the ability to properly and directly help Ukraine. Um, so all of these things uh, must be be considered on a daily basis right now because we cannot, the world cannot stand by and watch Ukraine's independence and sovereignty be extinguished. That would be morally wrong from Ukraine's perspective, but the implications of that for the rest of us in terms of the values we hold dear, it would be severe too. Oh, what, Jesus. What a load of blah, 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 blah. How, to, how to spend two minutes talking to uh, the watching world and say absolutely nothing. nothing. Well, she did say something, of course. She did say that there was going to be a no... Well, no she wanted zone. a no-fly zone. But exactly. can you remind me, um, uh, David, when yep. did Nicola Sturgeon become a world leader? Indeed. So this, <laughs> this, this is what she's... This is what this, these discussions are all about, these interviews. It's all to show that she's sufficiently statesmanlike to comment on world affairs, whereas she is, as we all remember, the head of a floundering, utterly incompetent, failing devolved administration. That's it. Foreign affairs are rightly reserved to Westminster. Sturgeon has zero knowledge, zero understanding, and obviously no experience of any, for example, international military conflicts. And so her opinions yeah, I mean, in these matters are, you know, they're, 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 go on, Maria. No, is she, she's not even privy to defence yeah, information. Exactly. Quite. So she's genuinely, truthfully talking just off the top of her head, a load of nonsense. It's just arse, I think, is the uh, expression you're looking for. Out of an elchie, yeah. exactly. So I mean, it's just utterly pointless even having a, an opinion on the nonsense she's um, putting out here. But of course, as we know, I, it's easy to say, okay, why do people ask her these questions? Let's face it, you could say to her, how are you today, Nicola? And she'll say, well, I, I, I think that yeah, the, about the Ukraine conflict, you know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> she's she's going to give her opinions, completely unsolicited. Yeah. But of course, just to go to this, this discussion about a no-fly zone, just for the benefit of you maybe haven't been following this, a no-fly zone can only be um, enforced by engaging enemy aircraft, because the point is to stop Russian aircraft flying over Ukraine. So you stop anybody flying, and the only people who would try are Russian aircraft. So that would mean to stop them, you'd have to send up uh, jets from NATO countries to engage with Russian aircraft in Ukrainian airspace. So in other words, 
Nicola Sturgeon is suggesting that one military force which contains a nuclear capability should confront another new, uh, military force, Russia, which also has a nuclear capability, in an act of military aggression. I don't know if you're aware of this, Ms. Sturgeon, but if you do that, then the chances are that you're going to escalate the conflict to such an extent that a nuclear strike might be threatened. It might be on the table. It yeah, but it's not. I mean, it's not a real. It's not a real suggestion. It's, it's, what it is is they're trying to get in front of the telly. That's exactly. it. Front of, on the TV, and appear like a world leader. Right. Yes. That's, that's all so, she's doing. That's all she's doing. The fact that she's talking utter student sixth form nonsense in so doing really has to be pointed out, though. You know. So um, even I mean, even the US have said no. We don't want these fighter jets from Poland to be given up. Normally, the US is very hawkish when it comes to inter international affairs, particularly when it comes to military action but even the us has said no no we're not going to do this but sadly our first minister is not quite as prescient or as <laughs> switched on so uh, but this is this is it shows that there is no point whatever in listening to um sturgeon's irresponsible saber rattling which is all it is um and so it's classic sturgeon behavior and this is what we talked about at the start of this little piece grandstanding that's what she does she grandstanding in a vain attempt to appear relevant when she's not offering unsolicited opinions on matters which have nothing to do with her and rambling incoherently about the need to monitor the situation in Ukraine, which is what Alan Smith said as well. I hope we're we'll we'll monitoring this. I mean, you're going to monitor it, are you guys? Oh, that's great. Why didn't NATO think of that? But as we know, this is not exactly new ground for Sturgeon to, to, to be grandstanding. That is, she has similarly demonstrated her expertise in grandstanding without purpose on all sorts of matters, closing the attainment gap for one, which she and our government, of course, have well, we'll singled. We'll come to, come to that. that. We'll come to that in a second. Mm -hmm. I've got yeah. quite a good one here. Yeah, yeah. Um, from Don, who says they want to uh, send in the planes, but want to get rid of Faz Lane. It's a great you know, it's, comment. It's, <laughs> but again, it's not to do with reality. It's, it it's really not. is to do it's, it's, with uh, just getting in front of the TV at any point. I yeah. think this posturing. Uh, we'll, posturing. It's, it's well, let's go listen the to um, yep. Nicholas Sturgeon says. That's, yeah. that's the headline yeah, that creates, it. you know, yeah. uh, and, well, and, and a, put whatever there. Let's have a listen to what Alistair Jack says. Oh, yeah, Alistair Jack, excellent. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, what is the so I thought that remark was utterly irresponsible, to be clear, and, and actually very naive. A no-fly zone is not on the table. I mean, and luckily, this is a decision for the United Kingdom government. This is a decision. The cabinet was briefed by the chief of the defence staff on Tuesday morning. We listen to what he had to say about that. We take our lead from the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State for Defence. But absolutely no way would we get involved in a no-fly zone. There you go. There, there you we go. go. Straight for the horse's know. mouth. Spoken like someone who knows what he's talking about, thank yep. goodness. Yes. So, yeah, someone quite right. Yeah. Yeah. Not just who knows what they're talking about, who knows... Intimately what they're talking about. Who's, who's, yep. in, who's, who's able to... Who's, be, who's part of the decision-making process. Absolutely We have, right. again, we talked about this at the beginning, there's... there's you know, it's a it's a devolved administration that's supposed to help Scots. How yeah. does rambling on about a no-fly zone help Scots? It's just not. It doesn't. <laughs> the only thing it helps is Sturgeon staying in power and this idea that she is a, a war. You know, is a world leader. World, world leader. World a leader. On, leader. on a tweet, exactly. Just because she has created a no-fly zone around Presswick and a no-sail <laughs> zone around Scottish islands doesn't mean it would work in. Ukraine. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. yes, that type of thing there. Well, you we talked a little bit about grandstanding there. Yes, um, yes, yes. Um, so, you you any turn on any television any day in Scotland, you see Sturgeon grandstanding on some subject, whether it's her own uh, claiming that she's going to close the attainment gap or asking to be judged in education, right? Fine, we'll come back to that. Or even going across to uh, California to lecture students at Stanford University <laughs> on climate change. What the hell is this First Minister of Scotland doing in Stanford University talking about climate change? Nothing to do with you, sweetheart. Go home. So ridiculous. So, and oh, you want to be judged in your education record? If you insist, no problem. The judgment is you failed miserably. So yeah. there you go. Well done. I mean... And Set, I mean, the, the latest thing I've seen was they're sending the unwanted baby boxes, you know, <laughs> that, that are they're piling up in the charity shops because nobody wants them, or they take the good bits out and leave the baby boxes. Charities stop accepting them because they've got that much. I've got an idea. Let's send them all to the Ukraine and get me in front of the papers again. Easy game. Easy game. So what she's yeah. done, she's sent all the unwanted uh, baby boxes over to Ukraine. 
well done. Another inane grandstanding thing. Well, this morning, this, absolutely right. I, this morning I made a tweet out. It was about Andy Burnham. Now I, he's the he's the mayor uh, of Manchester. Mayor, mayor of, of Manchester. Manchester. Yeah, that's right. Right, and he 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 is responsible for a population of two point seven million people in the Manchester mm-hmm. metro area. Sturgeon mm-hmm. responsible for five point five million. And I looked through his tweets, and now I'm I'm not a in this a fan of uh, Andy Burnham, other than he likes a few indie, indie bands that I like. But, um, you know, I looked through his, his tweets and basically it's like, oh, we're trying to get the buses in order for our, our people. And, or, or here's, he did talk about Ukraine a little bit, but it's always like the people of Manchester have donated. Yeah. He doesn't, he's not inserted himself into the middle of the discussion. And, I mean, we look at the other devolved administrations or other politicians. Mm-hmm. What well, other politicians are standing up there yeah. who are not actually getting to do with it and standing up and saying, oh, yeah, you know, I think we should do this, X and Y and Z and all this. You're like, wait a minute, it's Why? nothing to do with you. What yeah, we want I, you to do is empty the bins, absolutely. fix the potholes and, you know, get rid of the rats. How I difficult think, is that? I think the difference is that obviously Andy Burnham is grounded in reality. Uh, he Quite. knows uh, who he's serving, uh, the people in Manchester, whereas Nicola Sturgeon doesn't know who she serves. She wants to be a world well, she leader. she serves herself. That's yes. what it comes down to. She's First and foremost, herself. she serves herself and she looks after her own future. That's what all of this is about. Absolutely, it's showing sure. how she's she's ready to follow Blair's lead and go and uh, participate in the lecture tour in the US and get a job at the UN or all this. No, and that's all this is about, guys. And mm-hmm. In the meantime, she's just juggling irresponsibly with the future of Scotland and in the meantime mismanaging Scotland they're ensuring Scotland is appallingly well, not, mismanaged. Uh, yeah I see you know here's a, a so let's put this one up here as yeah, well. Yeah. Share in the national it confirms India F2 yeah. in, next year despite Ukraine invasion. It's like uh-huh. it's not just that you're talking about Ukraine, you're talking about India F2, which what can't happen. And you know, we, we you know the countries we want our health, education, police all this stuff we actually went down. We don't want a virtue signaling administration. Right. We want yeah. actually someone to do the basics, just the basics. Can you not just And there's a the fantastic basics? comment. Uh, Sturgeon is using this war to grandstand and try and get political points. It's Quite. sickening. The so lowest sick, of right. the low. Uh, and it I is, agree that. It's, it's it's true. We covered that last week. It's horrible. It is this 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 exploitative. It, it's genuinely it's 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 mawkish. It's awful. Really, this is the mark of a genuinely unpleasant person doing this. Um, I just want to uh, make a, one comment here. Fat short golf is says, "Do you remember the character played by Les Dawson, the woman gossiping, standing with her arms folded, gossiping with her neighbour?" That's Sturgeon. I would disagree slightly. I think that's a far better description of Susan Aitken because she looks exactly like Les Dawson. Also, so. <laughs> don't mean to be unpleasant, right. Susan, but sorry. Anyway, mm. moving on. Uh, so well, yes, can we just? Like- can, yeah, can we do just anything make... for love but empty the bins, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Quite, yeah. <laughs> so, so, and the last word on this so rather than trying to mastermind an end to the Russian and the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Mr. Sturgeon, can I suggest you maybe leave that to the grown ups, the people who know what they're talking about, and maybe focus on getting Scotland cleaned up a little bit? How's that? Yeah. There's my parting thought for you. Well, that's that. Okay, uh, coming up. By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. <laughs> now is on his <laughs> witch hunt. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, hello and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, again, another week in Scottish politics goes by and another comedy special emerges. Uh, we're very, very used to the sheer insanity coming from the SNP and, and the SNP ranks. But we've had the ludicrous suggestion it saw the bottoms of doors off and this week. Something very, very similar. Very similar indeed. And uh, to be honest, look, I don't know which, which is worse. Uh, and, and hopefully you can tell me in the comments, right? Sturgeon used her time, and by her time I mean our time, uh, in Holyrood to issue a formal apology to women accused of witchcraft in the 15th to 17th century. Uh, That's something I never thought I would say. Never thought that these words would be coming out my mouth. It's it's, it's (laughs) insane. Uh, But I didn't want to state the obvious here, but we're far and away, we've got much more pressing issues in Scotland. Much more pressing issues. And the idea 
to apologise to women accused of being witches. Isn't it even Sturgeon's idea? It's no Sturgeon's idea at all. Sturgeon's only the, the only man daft enough to actually date, though. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is where the idea comes from. So this is a woman, a QC, called Claire Mitchell. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, um, she's the one that was on the, the Murder Island. I don't know if you saw that. It was the, the show where they had Channel people four, trying right? to... Uh, yeah, yeah, they were trying to do the uh, fight, solve a crime. It was a bit rubbish, mm-hmm. to be honest. She was on there, but she seems to have this big thing about the witches and seems to be related to um, some kind of, you know, and well, I was, so I was thinking about this since we actually started doing the preparation for the mm-hmm. show. And I was thinking, this, there's something, you know, why is, why is, why is the focus on the witches here? Uh, you know, it's because it's a wo- woman, right? But yeah, yep. she ever issued an apology for all the men who died? You know, protecting um, the UK and Scotland in the First World War and the Second World War and all this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's it's, it's it seems a very mixed priorities, I, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, I think skewed. So, I mean, is this another favour to our pals? You know, uh, this Claire Mitchell in the article she says, uh-huh. "I think it would be right. very powerful if Miss Sturgeon was to apologise to." Uh, those accused of witchcraft on International Women's Day. And lo and behold, International Women's Day rolls around and Nicola apologises to, to women who had died 400 years ago. Well, the thing and is, of course, the po- apology doesn't affect them, does it? I mean, nope. it doesn't affect them. Already, it doesn't you know? affect anyone uh, Anyone that was related to them has passed away at this point. Uh, the generations of people uh, have passed on since then. Uh, it's so useless this apology, and and where's she going to send the apology to? If you were to apologise, where would you send it? Where, it where doesn't make much. It doesn't make much. Now I think I think we can all say a, a grave. Well, I think we can all say at this time that what happened in the past, many terrible things happened in the past. Yep, indeed, there was witchcraft, there was slavery. There were people treated badly. Have pe- people have treated each other badly all throughout history? Absolutely. And but. Again, it's and and perhaps we can say that these this thing that happened to these women it was bad. I've I've read some of these stories, uh, witchcraft stories, are they're quite shocking, you know. But they happened all over, they happened all over the world, and that's Absolutely. not it's not an excuse either. Yeah. It's a terrible thing, but what? Why does the government need to get involved in it? Uh, that's the thing I, I I wonder about. Why is it specifically Nicola Sturgeon and Nicola Sturgeon's pals that have made this a priority right yeah. now when we do have a lot of other pressing issues. Let me just say it again. Mm. Empty the bins. Empty the really? bins. Indeed. Dear God. Uh, Get rid so of the racks. Comments coming in. Uh, is she going to apologise to the people of Scotland who are being killed just by being ill mm. and needing help in the failing NHS in Scotland? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, she should be apologising to that. And, you know, this this apology, it does none for Sturgeon, it does none for the SNP, it does none for women. Yep. It only drags the SNP further down into the depths of delusion. It's unbelievable. Quite right. uh, current day Scotland is a seething cauldron of division and grievance. Oh, seething. Well seething. Uh, my question to you, Mark and David, right? Is this the end of the road for Sturgeon? Are, are, we, are these the telltale signs of running out of road? Sorry, Yellow Brick Road. Uh, or, or, or f- <laughs> fading into uh, irrelevance, basically. My my view is she's exhibiting many many of the characteristics and the traits that Margaret Thatcher showed in 1990, just before she was famously she got the Julius Caesar treatment from her own cabinet, and I think something similar will happen. And I I really don't think that there's any other way to to view the, the fact that Sturgeon personally is still saying, oh yeah, there's going to be a referendum next year. And do everything in my power. So when it comes to next year and there is no referendum, what's she going to do? I think she's going to have to say, well, I've tried. I couldn't get you there. And I think she will step down. I think she's looking increasingly exhausted. I don't think she's enjoying it. You can tell when somebody is being interviewed, which is what is yeah. supposed to happen, public figures, and they start sneering at their interviewers and saying, I, I expect a certain level of intelligence. That's not the sign of someone who's on top of their brief or who is enjoying the cut and thrust. That's the sign of somebody's had enough. To me, so yes, I think this is at least the beginning of the end now. Yeah. Well, I think um, I don't know. I think it plays to some part of her audience, but that is a very small part sure. uh, of it. I think as we have this virtue signalling administration, you can only virtue signal for so long. You can, right. I mean, you can do it for a long time, as she has proven. 
I mean, you, I, can only I, do, you can only do it for so long before people are like, can you not just go on with it? Um, and I think we're getting to we're getting much more to that stage. And it's not just her opponents that are saying that, you know, like we might say, you know, empty bins, but the her supporters are saying, what, what, why are you dealing with uh, these issues? Why are you talking about witches? Why are you talking about gender um, reform? Why are you talking about all this other stuff? And then independence or independence referendum is an afterthought. You know, to date, we saw, and you, I think one of the things we can see in the SNP is this uh, the beginning of cracks in in their in their appearance, appearance that's not really the right word in their organization well we yeah. had yeah was it blackford who said well there's blackford not going to be a referendum morning, that's right. right and then then sturgeon's on oh no there is going to be a referendum but you know that's that makes me think that they they're they're, ner they're nervous they're unsure they don't know what's going on because they they, they must know there's no path and yeah. if, if, if this Mike Russell thing that I talked about earlier uh, is the, the path is to force an advisory referendum that will be will be will be boycotted, will be struck down by the Supreme Court um, and won't be recognised internationally. If that's the extent of their actual plan, then yeah. there is no plan. I think uh, I might go a bit further than that, Mark. I think they've known for a long time that there is no <clears> chance. And oh, yet they push it anyway. And yet they push it anyway because they see it as getting them votes, they see it as getting them power. And the cycle continues until we get a hard stop from the UK government. Yeah, I think the, and the window for Sturgeon to be able to leave is not narrowing significantly, I think. So she has to, if she wants to get out with her She'll reputation need time for the successor for, to build up yeah well not so much that she needs if she's thinking about it personally she has to get out before her reputation gets totally trashed she doesn't want to be known as the person who never delivered a referendum yeah. she wants to get out before mm -hmm. that and hand it over to someone else and give them the poison chalice so she wants to come out come out and 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 if possible, get some international job where she can say, "Well, look, I did great stuff for women. Look, I did this. I did this. Uh, uh, witches, you know, we pardon the witches. <laughs> this is great. I pardon the witches. It? You know, like I mean, ah. but some some people out there in the world will lap that kind of crap up. But the people of Scotland now are not at the point where they're they're getting a bit tired of it all. Now, as I said, it's not our, uh, us as opponents are tired of it, of course. Yes. But yeah. it's our supporters, when they get tired of it, when they realise there's no path to second referendum, there, it's a hard stop, and the amount of dissolution they're going to have is... I, I, it's, I, it's going to be un unbelievable. It's going to yeah, and they're going to turn, yeah. turn on her and turn on the party, and the, the party will be forever tainted. Now, we'll have a better discussion this next week. I think that the SNP power is, you know, they're unassailable. I think it's very brutal, and I think that if a certain tipping point is reached and people yeah. see, the supporters see that they're not getting this thing promised and that they were never going to get it. I, th I think they're, they're one, one, Jenga, uh, one Jenga block away for just complete collapse. Uh, I think yes. they're, they're um, uh, a scintilla away from collapsing. But, you know, I say this every week and yet they survive, they, 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 they crawl onward. I think they're limping onward. Yeah. Uh, I think they're damaged, they're wounded uh, and I think ultimately uh, we might see the end of Sturgeon by the end of the year. Well, we'll see. I yep. think these things can, events can happen very quickly. I think that's the thing. Things hit a tipping point. Things can change overnight. Indeed. People can say, you know, one day you're like, oh, look, I don't I don't even think about statues. Next day it's a whole big discussion. So, Everyone's talking about uh, stuff like that. Rita Johnson, you know? uh, a wee comment there. I'm not sure hardcore supporters will ever turn on Sturgeon. Well, it's interesting you say that, Rita. So I was having a conversation with an SNP voter. Um, and I said, well, do you like Nicola Sturgeon? Absolutely not. And, and you're thinking, wait, how can you be an SNP voter and not like Nicola Sturgeon? It's, so the, even our own supporters are turning on Nicola herself and not the party. So yeah, uh, well, there, there's a weird, weird paradigm going on yeah. in Scottish politics. It's hard the thing to, they have to yeah. The thing they have to realise, it's like, there's not going to be, once they realise there's not going to be a referendum and she was stringing them along all this time. Yes. That's the thing. So once we get to the hard stop, and maybe it's actually probably a good idea maybe for the UK government not to actually do a hard stop, just think off the top of my head, because, 
you know, let it, let it, let it be known that she was the one that mm -hmm. that, that stopped it. Because she couldn't get anywhere anyway. Well, maybe I don't know. It's, it's either and either or really. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty good part of the discussion we had there. Absolutely. Discussion there. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to move on, and it's going to be Zimmer of the week. Fantastic. No, that was the wrong one. Let's try that again. Try it again. That's the correct one this time, Matt. I, I need to get it. some guy to go, Zoomer of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer oh, for sorry. that. Yeah. Anyway, right. Okay, anyway. Okay. All right. Um, you know, see, this, we're having fun here. Why, mm -hmm. you know, this is what it's about. We, we're not a miserable you know, nationalist. We're like, we're having fun. We're going to take these yeah. people down and have fun while we're doing it. Absolutely, here, 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 here. The here. only way to do it, actually. That's it's right. the only so, way. So, anyway, David, your, your <laughs> okay. um, nomination. Yeah. My nomination. So, in this very vein uh, of laughing at people, my Zoom of the week this week is Angus Brendan McNeil, as he styles himself on Twitter. Since Russia invaded Ukraine, a bit like Sturgeon, Big Sexy Angus, as he was famously called, uh, has repeatedly rubbished the UK government's policy in relation to re Ukrainian refugees. Ag Agnes, or Agnes, uh, however you'd like to call him, believes that the EU, and particularly the Republic of Ireland, interestingly, have shown the way and taken the correct approach in waiving the need for refugees to have visas in order to ent enter the country, etc. And he's tweeted to that effect all week. Now, today, Agnes, big sexy Agnes, tweeted something really quite um, eye-opening, and he said that uh, uh, this was a retweet of somebody who said the government, the UK government is worried that Ukrainians can get into the UK via the Republic of Ireland without any visas or biometric checks, which is true. They can get in there and then, of course, they can get a train up to Belfast and they can get across to Scotland for £38. And he, as this chap said, wouldn't it be terrible if people retweeted this information that became widely known in Ukraine? Angus retweeted this. So Angus is encouraging Ukrainians to enter the UK illegally via, to Scotland, via Republic of Ireland. And he is talking up the Republic of Ireland daily, several times a day now. Unbelievable. Now, it is, it's quite staggering that Angus, of course, Angus Brendan, is currently waiting to decide whether to, to attempt to take on Ian Blackford for the job as S&P leader, because we all know he's going to step down because he blew it over um, pensions. Blackford. Yes. The, 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 the knife is coming. And Angus is either going to take on the, the opportunity to fight for that job or else he'll give up on the SNP altogether when he finds out, as Mark has just been saying, that they are completely unable to deliver an independence referendum and they have, in fact, led the supporters along for years. And he'll jump shit to Albert. So he's going to do one of those two things. So look out for more soul searching of this sort from Agnes in the coming weeks. So my nomination for Zoomer is Big Sexy Angus. <laughs> yeah, he had, I mean, when the Supreme Court made the judgment against uh, uh, the Scottish government for trying to force through the rights of the child, the UN yeah. rights of the child legislation, he wrote a th he had a, a tweet out there and he said, "Well, oh, this is really bad. It looks like there's not going to be a referendum." And uh, you know, this is the same thing. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of bluster and stuff on the top of these politicians, and they they must know it's a, they know underneath that that's not right. really good. But I think this to go back to your point is is. Uh, uh, trying to say to people whether they're refugees or not, to here's the back door and the way you can get in is not that's, really that's appropriate. Unreal, that's 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 time. For, a, for, a West, for a Westminster me a member of uh, Parliament, uh, yes. to say that. Honestly, it, it should be reprimanded for that in some way. Absolutely right. Yeah, it's quite shocking. I think that one is. Yeah. Um, well, you know, this is. It was only a well retweet, them. to be fair. <laughs> yes, it was a retweet. Yeah, yeah. It, it was not. It wasn't his words, but I mean, he shared the sentiment, yeah. which is you know. indeed. Well, that's the thing. Doing that. I mean, they're, they're all grandstanding to some extent, aren't they? They're trying to get something. If it's not about the refu if it's not about the no fly zone, then it's about re refugees. Oh, the UK isn't doing enough. The UK is is it bad? The UK is evil. It's like you know. Okay, you just it's a bit much, really. Yeah. You know. Uh, the the thing is, the UK. If you look at the polls from Ukrainians, they say the UK is helping them most of all, and it That's is because right. it's sending it's trained their army and send them send them tons of weapons, mm -hmm. and how to use them. So, um, uh, I think there's, there's certainly a, a, enough support going on. And uh, this refugee things is a bit overstated. I mean, really, you, people, it's, Ukraine is quite a far far distance away, and there are many other countries between the here and there. That people can go to but that's not Absolutely. to say we shouldn't take in people who have relatives here and so on and need some safe harbor 
for mm-hmm. uh, for the period and, of and the it war. Will happen, yeah. I'm sure it will happen. But they're just they're just sneering at Johnson because the numbers taken in so far in the UK are relatively low, whereas in the UK and the, the EU seem to be higher. But that will be addressed in time. We know that. So it is grandstanding. It's just taking a, a non-point really and stretching it. So so that's me, big Angus. Big Angus is my mind. Okay. Who's next? All right, I'm next. So my Zoomer of the week is uh, Wings Over Scotland, Stuart Campbell. And um, some of you may have followed Wings Over Scotland over the years. When the Alex Salmond case was mm-hmm. on, he was actually providing some quite decent insight into that case. And as I think anyone who follows uh, Wings Over Scotland also know he hates Nicola Sturgeon and thinks that she will yeah. not deliver a referendum. In fact, he disliked, he disliked Nicola Sturgeon and thought there was so much, little chance of a referendum happening, he actually gave up and closed Wings Over Scotland. <laughs> That must have been about in January, but recently I've been uh, on the Times and the other day there was this article here which is Nicola Sturgeon won't be leader next Scottish independence referendum. Well, we all kind of know that. I think that's mm-hmm. the thing. I mean, Alex Massey won't come out and say straight up that there's not going to be a referendum. He's kind of, he couches it a bit, but basically that's what he's saying. But anyway, in the, he, I guess who's in the comments? Rev Stu, there he is. He's in there. I don't have the, the screenshot of it, but he's been popping up there on the on the comments, Times comments. And I've been engaging him a couple of times on there, and it's quite it's quite entertaining, um, and yeah. because he seems to be stuck in a little bit of a loop. Let's put it that way. So we've got someone who is basically um, saying that. Uh, he, I, it's my opinion that, uh, I think as I just mentioned not that long ago, um, that we will reach a tipping point and the SNP will shatter, split, and there won't be the force there'll be. People will turn on them and say they didn't deliver that. But uh, his opinion is different. He thinks that uh, Labour and Tories are weak, and that is definitely true. That's not to say they won't improve. Yeah. And that we'll be stuck with 15 years of SNP government from now on. And he's like, well, we are going to be stuck with 15 years of SNP government. And I like fighting away, you know, talk, talk say, saying, well, you know, mate, if you um, you gave up, right? Aye. So why wouldn't other people give up? Mm-hmm. If you, you know, you gave up early because you know what's going on. But why would anyone else um, not give up if you've already given up? Mm-hmm. And so on. And then after a while, he says, he accused me of being um, like one of those Japanese... Uh, you know, the Japanese soldier who's stuck in the jungle and, you know, comes out after the war and says, is the war over? Um, <laughs> whatever. And I'm like, no, no, really. No, so maybe the opposite I, way around, I. <laughs> the opposite way around. You gave up the war. You lost the war. Absolutely right. You gave up. You went into hiding. If you're not in the jungles of Borneo, you're hiding in the genteel wilds of Bath. <laughs> and you're taking pot shots, you know, for a war that's gone, you're taking pot shots out in the times. It's like, you give up already, yeah. Mike. You gave already, gave up. You don't need to it's more keep like going. The, uh, the Japanese soldier comes at the jungle and says, Please tell me the war is still on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's it defines like that, his you know, existence. Uh, exactly. I, um, uh, that's what I, I, I get for Stuart. I mean, Stuart, uh, I was following him uh, along for a while in you know, uh, Wings Over Scotland, but I think there was a lot of gnats that threw in the towel when he did. A lot. Uh, yeah, that was, could uh, be. It was. One of the most visited websites around, well, uh, especially it, in Scottish politics. Anyway, you know it's uh, the numbers are sort of minuscule, but uh, he he had a, a really good big platform, a uh, big audience, and when he gave up, a lot of his followers did as well. And I think I, that's I, what maybe um, started the exodus towards Alba. I think that's true, you know, because not only was it widely followed, he was very well respected among yes. nationalist supporters. I don't know if you remember Kezia Dugdale t- telling the rather sad story of the fact that she'd become estranged from her father, her own father, who is, of course, an SNP voter and an absolute devotee of Wings. And she said, my father will read what Wings puts on Twitter or uh, on his blog and will treat it as absolute fact, absolute gospel fact. And that's that's what Wings had. That's, he did have that. Now he's coming out and saying all this stuff. And he's basically trashing the SNP, trashing Sturgeon and saying, there's no way they're going to deliver anything. I'm out of here. So Maybe we should get them on. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'd like to say that Stuart did his best. 
Yep. You know, and DJ, uh, that's... considering the amount of lies and disinformation he's spreading, he's still spreading spreading stuff. He recently reposted an old article about pensions and still trying to make the case. And it's it's more like he did his worst. And he should bow out now. He he he, he did his worst and it didn't work. Yeah. It's not going to happen. The UK is going to survive. Um, there's no second referendum. And right now, nobody wants to be in a world where you where they're off alone and not knowing what the security is. It's Absolutely. just not going to happen anymore. No. So move on, um, Stu, and we, you know maybe yeah. you've become a Lib Dem again, <laughs> as you were in the old days. That's right. Quite a jump from being a Lib Dem to being a, uh, a yeah. nationalist, I have to say. But well, you yeah. know, you can if you jump one way, you can jump one way back. All right, um, next up, it's, uh, oh, now I'm going to close this with the uh, zoom in. Ah, right, I'll just close this out of the night, gentlemen. What what a week it's been. What a week. Uh, you know, my Zoom of the week, it comes with no uh, no surprise. Uh, it's the head of the snake, Nicola Sturgeon herself. The, the, the apology to which she's got me quite uh, incensed and livid, actually. So I'm at, pictured me. I'm I'm, I'm in the in the house, uh, reading away, watching videos in the Ukraine conflict, seeing what the hell's happening, and then this headline flashes up on my phone. It's Nicola Sturgeon issues formal apology, and it left the rest the rest blank. Uh, so I'm like, oh my god, what she issued an apology? Oh my god, it's witches. <laughs> And oh, I was so angry. <laughs> I was like, it just got me so incensed. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, you know, you're expecting, oh, my, thank God she's apologising for something. Thank God. Uh, and, and then you look at it and then you're like, no, mm. she's not apologising for anything. She's, <laughs> she's grandstanding uh, and, and making herself look good uh, by uh, the need to look good by using the past 500 years in the past it's just yeah. it's insanity uh, we'll and apologize uh, for the roman invasion next day eh? absolutely um, I, I, I was in larks today i'm just waiting for nicola to apologize to the vikings for beating their peaceful uh, european living um mm -hmm. combatants at the battle of larks in 1263 so when they and she'll probably ban thistles because didn't they famously take their shoes off and walk from the thistles and that's why and they all screamed in agony and that's why the thistle is the national well, maybe it's just being a large beach you know i could just be you know, just screaming because they thought oh my god when you're so cool it's what we're going to do exactly you ended up here okay uh we're, we're going to blame uh uh, Eve for eating apple, you know, it's, yeah, it's quite just, exactly. It's, yeah. I, 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 how no, far no, are it's Adam for, for not for no stopping her, uh, quite, yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, indeed. we have uh, where is it? Uh, Anne Clark says, Love you guys, uh, voice of reason, yes, indeed, we are. Thank you and, very much, um, thank you. We love you too. We okay, love I'm, everyone who's I'm watching. Just got a comment on Paddy, Paddy Murray. We are being labeled Scottish traitors here. We should be ashamed of ourselves. History will remember us. Yes, well, all I can see to you, Paddy, actually. is best of luck against England on Saturday and next Thursday. Enjoy Paddy's day. Good luck. <laughs> uh, right. Well, okay. So who's going to? Player, but thank who's you very much. Nile, I think I think Niall is most passionate about his. I definitely. Yeah, honest, I mean. Honestly, it was. It got I think me it really has to be. It has to be you. It has to be. It has to be. It has to be. I mean, as I've always said, Angus isn't really notorious enough or anything enough to be. The, uh, the zoomer of the week or, or win any prize, so yeah, I'll give it to Nicola. I mean, yeah. and Nicola is... doesn't actually get that many. To be no, that's true. So, that's, we, that, that's true. Just, there's also many other ones going on, but mm -hmm. I think this is good. You, I think you are. You well, are co congratulations, one, Nicola. That's another accolade. Fantastic. <laughs> zoomer of the week. Fantastic. Well, she should probably put that. She should grandstand about that, I guess. <laughs> right. Okay. So. Uh, wrapping up, we're going to running a little bit late tonight, but it's not too bad. Uh, a few, a couple more minutes if we wrap up. Uh, let me see where are we at. We have thank you the do says thank you donors and thank you everyone for watching this. So thank you everyone who donated to the podcast. Um, we, if you can, please uh, put a little bit of cash our way. It helps. We've got hosting costs and software costs, and we just to, to you know it takes a lot of time to put this together and it's yeah. great to have uh, Niall and uh, David spending their time on this as well and get them a beer every now and again um um thanks to UK Union Voice what's someone 
a big thanks to UK Union Voice and United Against Separation for, and the other pages that support us by helping to distribute uh, the podcast there. You can see this again on YouTube. It will be there if you want to see it again. And you can subscribe and get alerts there as well. I'm going to leave you with the thought of the week. Nationalists act like they never lost the referendum and the UK government acts like it never won. So it's time to enforce Scotland's choice. When shall we three meet again? <laughs> How about when Jill Sturgeon finds a man? <laughs> oh my God, don't say that. Uh, we'll meet when the Hurley Burley is done and the battle is lost and won. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. The battle oh will God. be won. Uh, it certainly will be. So we three will be back again next Thursday, 7 well. p.m., like to thank you all for watching. Thank you, Nile and David. Mm -hmm. uh, good you, evening, Mark. everyone. Uh, thank, thanks very much for watching. Uh, yeah. Do continue to share it after the fact. Uh, I know a lot of people will be tuning into a certain sports event tonight, so uh, please do watch after the fact. Okay, thanks have a great much. night. Thank you. Thanks very much a lot, guys. Me. See you next week. Bye now. Bye.